Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, members of the prayer of the press. Good afternoon, our citizen chain champions. May please you to note that we have just concluded a very crucial and important meeting. Our citizens national assembly which is the highest decision-making body in our movement, in the citizens' movement. This Citizen National Assembly has been meeting, this is our 18th meeting. It meets every month, once every month, and therefore this meeting was basically an extraordinary meeting, which extraordinary meeting was supposed to deal with a number of emerging issues. I want to thank you for your indulgence. We're supposed to start earlier, but we had a lot of issues to ruminate over and decide on. And we've managed to come up with a number of resolutions that we wish to communicate to the people of Zimbabwe and to the world. As I indicated in the Citizen National Assembly, we have representatives from the 63 clusters in terms of our constitution. And these 63 clusters are represented by two leaders, the head and the deputy. So the members you see here present are those leaders from all the parts of our country, all the four corners of Zimbabwe. I know a lot of people have misunderstood and misinterpreted our eloquent articulation of uh, who we are in ideology when we said we are a structurally structure. What it simply means is that we will not allow our opponents to dictate to us, to reveal to them what our structure is. But we have a structure. We know our structure is an entity, and that structure has been working very well for us. It is the structure that managed to produce a presidential candidate. It is the structure that managed to produce parliamentary candidates, 210 of them, and also proportional representation, representatives, as well as senators. It is the same structure that produced almost 1,900 um, councillors across the whole country. That structure is the structure that met today and is the structure that reviewed the developments in the country. The first issue we discussed and touched on is the deteriorating situation in the country, politically, socially, economically, particularly when one has regard to the trip and tour ahead across the whole country. I've gone across the country, the feedback I'm getting from the people of Zimbabwe, the citizens of Zimbabwe, is that they are generally agreed that the election was fundamentally flawed, that the election was bogus, that the election violated the constitution of Zimbabwe, that the election in the various provinces did not accord with the electoral laws of our country and did also not align with the guidelines, protocols of SADC, the African Union, and global standards. And because of that, they resolved and they've given me as the leader of the citizens the mandate to make sure that I use every platform, locally, nationally, and internationally, to share this view by the citizens. And they have indicated that they do agree that there was some kind of an elected leadership, but it's an elected leadership out of a contested and disputed election. Therefore, whatever we have is a caretaker authority. A caretaker authority in central government, a caretaker authority in parliament. Yes, we won a number of seats. In fact, we swept in all the urban areas. But that doesn't make the election legitimate. Those MPs who are triple C MPs and now Zimbabwe MPs are simply caretaker MPs together with the ZANU-PF1 in parliament. So we have a caretaker parliament. We have a caretaker local authorities. The mayors, the councillors, they are caretaker because it's a disputed election. Until a valid election is held. So even Mr. Mnangagwa chooses 
to inaugurate himself a million times or choose a cabinet a dozen times. He has a caretaker government that does not have the legitimacy of the people of Zimbabwe. And it is also an acknowledgement and recognition of what we have heard from the people that there's a lot of victimization, persecution, human rights abuses, particularly targeting triple C candidates. Some have been incarcerated. A case in point is our member of parliament who is in behind bars right now, Macon Central. He was not even at the scene of the violence where an alleged case of violence was reported, but he has been incarcerated. Clear classic case of victimization. A case of our MP for Chirundura, Chirumans, Chirumansu South, Cheza, who has been victimized and incarcerated on trumped up charges. Our polling agents who participated in the election, flawed election, have had their houses burned down. Some are being deprived of food, weaponization of food in the countryside. Some have been deprived of even the opportunity to even have water services in communities. They can't use certain bowls in certain communities. Classic case of political victimization. I'm sure you read about some, some of our agents and those who are campaigning for us. We had to be made to pay you know, a fine of some goats for just campaigning for triple C. So we have all these victimization cases, including the issue of being denied inputs on account of having supported triple C. There are even people whose farms are being threatened to be taken just because they were seen to be associated with the triple C. One issue that tells you that even in a flawed election, we won emphatically the presidential election. We won emphatically the mayoral election. That's why we have 33 out of 34 in a flawed election. In a much more credible election, we are even going to do better 34 out of 34. We won emphatically, even in terms of parliamentarian uh, candidates. Yes, you may say that we have 104, as has been declared by Zek, but we have much more. And this is why there are cases that are raised for challenge, because certain things were not done in a proper manner. It is for this reason that Zimbabwean citizens and citizens across the whole country are demanding an immediate resolution of the legitimate crisis. But how are we going to resolve the legitimate crisis? To lead, you need the mandate. The mandate comes from a vote. That mandate is disputed. And therefore, there has to be a political settlement, a political dialogue, immediately, to be able to deal with the issues of a disputed election. And it is in this spirit that mandated by the citizens and by the Citizen National Assembly, we have written to SADC, to the SADC Secretariat, and for the SADC Chair and Heads of State, and we have communicated the same, to resolve the dispute and stalemate in Zimbabwe. We have copied ZANU-PF, because you know it takes two to tango. We have also reached out to ZANU-PF in their various organs to say we have to resolve the issue of a disputed election. Because even if you go by the declared disputed elections, it's almost a half-half or 50-50. Meaning to say that the sentiment in the country, in terms of the declared ZEC result, which is flawed, the sentiment is divided. You need the country to be in a conversation on the way forward around key reforms, politically, economically, and of course, constitutional and legally. And even building bridges with the whole world. You can't build bridges with the whole world if there are no bridges among us yourselves. So yes, it's in the very city, it runs as the Ageza. We are one people as a country. Our duty is to unite the nation and make sure that we find each other as a people and find a common way forward to resolve the issues where we have a fundamental dispute. In fact, when we go into an election, it's already a dialogue. Was a ballot is a form of a dialogue. When you have Chamisa there, Munangagwa there, on a ballot paper, it's a dialogue of the citizens. And the citizens must be able to give a mandate to the leader they want. 
So yes, dialogue is there, but it's half-hearted. Some would say, but look, why would you want that conversation? In the local authorities, the de facto government is triple C. In the central government, the de facto government, because of force, is zanu -PF. So we have a shared government, which may not necessarily be an inclusive government. And that shared government can only function better for the citizens if there is a conversation on a unanimous position on the credibility and legitimacy of a government. So we have two governments, effectively. But local government is effectively government. So yes, Triple C is government. Zanu PF is government. Triple C on account of support and mandate from the people. Zanu PF on account of cohesive apparatus, force, and other such mechanisms they, dis they di display and deploy. So yes, we are going to pursue that SADC route, but we also pursue the national route, dialogue at a national level. We ask for interlocutors that are unbiased to help us find each other. We've approached bishops, the church, to also help us. But beyond that, we also have within our democratic right to have a peaceful expression of our discontent at the appropriate time. So yes, we will mobilize, but it's not a triple e issue. It's a citizen's issue. So we are engaging with other like-minded citizens from the churches, from the labor unions, from the students, from the women's groups, from the journalistic fraternity, from the professional groups, accountants, lawyers, everyone who feels business, everyone who feels that Zimbabwe must be one again, and Zimbabwe must be for everyone, and Zimbabwe must have a credible and legitimate government. We are going to engage and we play our part to make sure that we peacefully mobilize and we peacefully express ourselves at the appropriate time. Of course, we are also asking for the church to pray for this country. Because where we are going is going to be very difficult. Prayer helps. And prayer is going to change things as we do what has to be done. Number two, we also took note of the legitimate crisis spilling over to parliament. The triple C restates. And this is the triple C you are seeing here. Any other person who masquerades or are impositors as triple C are violating the law. And we don't have time for tomfoolery, kindergartenism, and funny games. Stay away <laughs> from triple C. Hands off triple C. This is a citizen's movement. Don't just wake up one day from the street in a drunken stupor. You say, no, I'm so and so. In this movement, we don't have the position of Secretary General. We have different roles and tasks. In this movement, we don't give each other positions. We give each other tasks. And I can tell you that the champions you see here are very clear, as we were clear when we elected our candidates. Nobody can just wake up and recall our candidates. In fact, it is a ZANU-PF scheme. The reason why ZANU-PF is using certain people particularly who purports to be triple C. We are not even in our books as uh, the membership register. Because we have a membership register. That's why we had citizen caucus across the walker. That's why when we go into the province, we are able to meet leaders. We have our membership registers and records. These people don't even exist there. But they want to purport. And what is so much a circus and the national shame is that Advocate Mdenda, whom I respect as a learned colleague, would know better that at law, you don't just receive communication even from the mass and you announce it. Otherwise, Musengez would have been allowed to recall Mr. Mdenda from being speaker. But we need to have clarity in terms of who should recall who. We have a party with a leadership, and that leadership is very clear. We know who is in charge of the structures, we know who is in charge of elections, we know who is in charge of communications, we know who is in charge of fundraising. That's why we're able to raise resources from the citizens. I must thank all the citizens for making us win under difficult circumstances. We're dealing with zanu -PF. That was so well funded. But the citizens, you did well. You funded half, almost a quarter of a billion for the nomination. You funded our polling agents. We've been able to even give them a token of appreciation. Catches of you, the citizens. Thank you. And thank you for supporting your movement. 
So in the context of developments in parliament, where we have seen illegal and unconstitutional recourse, we have restated the position and resolved as a citizen national assembly, and I'm the leader. But as a party, as a movement, we have not recalled a single MP. We are not abnormal. We have not gone bongas. We can't recall without due process. To recall anybody, members have their rights in terms of natural justice principles. They need to be heard. At law, we talk of what is called out ultra party rule. You need to be heard. If you are to receive charges, for you to cease to be a member, because the constitution is very clear. Two tests have to be made. Number one, have you ceased being a member? If you have ceased being a member, the party has verified that you have ceased being a member. It has to satisfy the second test. Has the party resolved to communicate to parliament? That test has not been met. And that's why we are saying to the honorable speaker, correct your error. Correct your mistake. We are writing and we have resolved to write to the speaker to correct that mistake. Not only are we asking for that mistake to be corrected, and we've given a time frame in our communication to the speaker, we have also said the impositors, we have mandated the party to pursue legal route, to pursue political route, but also to go to the authorities, police in, included, to report a clear case of fraud, impersonation, and a person who is an impositor. We have not known this person. He has never been part of us in this structure, and he has no mandate to represent us. He has no mandate to even masquerade. In fact, we are a movement. We are not an, an individual. No individual has the right to recall anyone. Even as a movement, when we recall, there are processes. There's a citizen caucus making a report. There is our appeal process being done, and adjudication, and of course, due process being taken. But you know, for people who are not our members, they will move around and say there is no constitution, there is no structure. Fair enough, because they don't know who we are. And they don't know that the party has organs, that the party has various structures that are governing it. We can't just wake up and do what we are doing without a regulating mechanism, which is our own statute and is in good and proper shape. So yes, we are asking Parliament to restore those MPs that have been recorded. And we have also communicated to them that this National Assembly is going to write by way of a resolution to the Speaker to deal with those issues. But we also took note of the systematic targeting of the people of Matebeleland. You know, yesterday, just before the election, it was the Blauai 12. They wanted to use courts to persecute them and to disqualify them. They failed. And all the 12 were voted for. Some impositor comes to say these people were imposed. The electorate have already made their determination on who they want to be a member of parliament for Blawai. Who are you as an individual to say that those people were not elected legitimately? They got the highest number of votes because they are credibly and legitimately elected by the people in Blawai. <laughs> but there is a formula to the madness. If you look at the constituents that have been targeted, these are constituents that had Zanpef big wigs or big shots who have money, particularly the gold mafia in Mabuku. You look at uh, uh, Kaldri Park, uh, Tuli. You look at uh, Lao Esar, Modi. So they are trying to bring back Zanupiev through the back door. Zanupiev accept that even in a flawed election, you were flawed by the people of Lao They don't want to. So that issue of a systematic persecution and campaign against the people of Matebele since the 80s, we've taken note of it. And we can't allow the perpetuation of this. In fact, to dramatize how bizarre it has been, Dube Koswanda, the MP of Binga, of the Tonga people, a loving Tonga people, had actually not been sworn in, but it was recorded. So they had to ask for a swearing in so that they recall him just five minutes after that. 
How do you disrespect a people? It is not the party that sponsored him, that has withdrawn him. It's just an individual who has just emerged from nowhere. So we want that issue to be resolved. But we have said, over and above this, we are also ordering all our deployees to parliament and local authorities to disengage from parliament and from council. <laughs> Until this issue is resolved. And when I say disengage, we have not said that they have withdrawn. They are disengaging, meaning to say that no business shall be transacted until remedy and justice is done through the mechanism that we have agreed. In fact, we are putting on notice all key stakeholders in the country, including civil society, SADC, AU, the EU, and the international community, including the United Nations, that we have a constitutional crisis in Zimbabwe. And that we have a disputed election in Zimbabwe. <laughs> and we are going to run a campaign diplomatically, politically, in a peaceful manner, in a constitutional manner. Because there are remedies within the constitution. And we are going to exhaust them. A lot of people are saying, ah, oh, no, you are too slow. You are not able to do this. No. Take it easy. We know what we are doing. We understand the pulse of this nation. We know our influence. We know our capacity. Organizing and mobilizing is not one of our weaknesses. We have many, but I can tell you that that is not one of our weaknesses. We can organize so well and mobilize so well that we can even persuade ZANPF members to be part of this legitimate issue because poverty knows no political part. In fact, any action, any peaceful expression of discontent must not be a partisan one. It must also reach out to ZANU-PF. I'm extending this invitation to people in ZANU-PF to come together. Come, let us reason together. You are also victims because you must know that poverty does not ask for a po political party cut. Suffering does not know a party cut. We all suffer and we are all suffering. School fees does not ask for a political party cut. Medical fees never ask for a political party card. We all suffer, and for that reason, we must work together for everyone. We have also taken note of the issue of our friend, comrade, Job Sikala, Jacob Ngarufume, and we have noted, Honorable Sagandira, the MRP comrades, those who are incarcerated, the political prisoners. We are continuing, apart and beyond, apart from and beyond the measures we have put in place so far, including reaching out to the region and international partners, we are asking for an immediate release of our comrades because we feel that they are not guilty. They must be granted bail, particularly for Job Sikala, is not feeling well. So yes, we also pursue a number of measures in line with what we are pursuing to deal with the issue of the legitimate crisis to make sure that we deal with the issues that are obtaining in this country. Let me hasten to say, we are fortified and humbled by the support we have received from the people of Zimbabwe. Yes, the election was flawed, but there's no room for division, confusion, or other funny diversion. The key issue in Zimbabwe is how do we deal with the national issue of a disputed election? There is no dispute, there is no legitimate crisis in the Triple C. The Triple C is under able and effective, capable stewardship <laughs> at all levels. And we are proud of it. It doesn't matter how much they try to divide us. Triple C is not MDC. Triple C is not PDP. Triple C is not all those other opposition political parties you have known. This is a citizen's movement with a different soul, a different trajectory, a different campus, and different hands. Touch not the triple C. I thank you. I want, if there are any questions, just to clarify, I was not going to take any questions, but I'm 
at liberty to take any questions on the issues, on the resolutions, and to clarify the matters, I think. Bruce, I'll start with ZBC. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned the issue of... No, no, it's OK. I've already done that. <laughs> I know him very well. You know, I've known Bruce since he was a young man. Uh, so I, I, I respect that. Thanks, Bruce. Okay, you mentioned the issue of uh, dialogue with uh, Zambia and also the, uh, the approach to church leaders to ensure that uh, the dialogue takes place. I, I want to understand the objective of this dialogue. For a GNU or election rewrite? Well, look, when you engage, when you have a dialogue, uh, unless if you wanted to say something, you can go. No, I, I, I wanted to add something on that. Sure. But uh, after mentioning dialogue, you also mentioned the issue of disengaging. So how are you going to achieve the true engagement and disengaging? In fact, disengaging is a form of dialogue. You are expressing dissatisfaction, it's a dialoguing mechanism. But just also to come to your issue directly, we are not coming with an answer that is prescriptive. We can't prescribe an answer. We have said we are prescribing the mechanism, and the mechanism is a political settlement. Let Zimbabweans find each other. This business of repeating you know, dif disputes around the elections, you don't resolve it, you go to another election, you can say, let's wait for 2020, but guess what? We'll have another disputed election in 2020. But between now and 2028, it's going to be fighting. No focus on the economy, focus on slogans. No focus on economics and feeding people. We are focusing on politics. That's dumb. Let's find each other, find permanent solutions. Right now, they are talking about by-elections. Look at the past five years. We had almost, I don't know, 29 by-elections. We spent, I don't over $30 million. Can you imagine if we had taken that 30 million to give it to our civil servants and to deploy it to our hospitals and to buy ambulances? Just a political decision that is stupid. <laughs> Why should you have by elections when there's no need for an election? But even the issue of making sure that there's a proper election, we need a window to deal with the toxic environment to deal with the institutions that are not properly constituted, including ZEC. ZEC must be disbanded. There must be a properly constituted independent electoral board with representatives from all the political parties. So yes, we are not coming forward with an answer. We have our answers, but that's why it is dialogue. We want to dialogue so that we produce a mechanism that transitions our nation to a consensus, finding each other, vision sharing, what is the trajectory for this nation? Where are we going as a people? How do we work together? Even if we don't want to work together, we are sharing the same bed. ZANU, Triple C, we are sharing the same bed, and we are the dominant partners. This business of looking onto the wall, this one onto the wall, there won't be production. <laughs> I didn't say reproduction, I said production. So yes, we have to find each other. Let's dialogue. In terms of what comes out of that dialogue, is to find each other. That is what modern people, even in, 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 in Israel, where they are fighting with Hamas, there has to be dialogue. So instead of guns being put into motion, why don't we silence the gun and activate dialogue? Because even guns are a mechanism to dialogue. So let's dialogue before the guns. Let's dialogue before fighting. Why should we even put people on the streets just to embarrass each other and make sure that our country is in trouble. Let's dialogue. But if you are not willing, we'll have to use the mechanisms constitutionally and peacefully that are available unto our church. Thank you, Bruce. Yes? Yes, 
Ndazi zwa zwa matawara but kwa tu wakutanga patwa eh, <laughs> Asimuchidimbu eh, Tukuti ma MP Arugu nzaka zingwa Ana kuzingwa zuripa mchemo Uye speaker waka puwa information Kana kuti humbo u Usiri u Uye waka tora Muna kango vako waka va De chitawara mchitawara chetu taiti Bakango tora chidura Chango vako wa chango va Choto nyora kuti zakat Nino asisi pa mchemo Ati gonu kutora masho kwa vako chidura Mashoko anofana kufa kuboka raka participate kana raka pinda msarudzi. Kuboka hero ranga rine mtungamiri. Mtungamiri ndiye uno uru kutawura. Bamwe wacho wa muru kuona ndo wano bakuma pazi kuma profi nzaka siya na siya. Watawara udisue msangani. Atina kumbo tora dani hirori. Takuto ona sokuti zanu pia fine chekuita ne dani hirori. Nukuti zaa itu kwa zanu pia fika ita chimbi chimbi sati yaka mbone kwa. Zepi mbi ya gudo. Yokuti jiwa ati ya mboto furirwa. Ya kuto toro wa mashu kwa sata ganga eva eva. Saka iyo yo ndonya ya tukuta wala kuta haa Zawazi mtsuro ma Mugozi matsuro Atidi zunu zwa kadaro Toda kutu zunu zituwe ne masu Saka tinonyo rila speaker kuti gaziri senyai Pa kuti disengage Tukuta wala kuti Wano shanda wali muuru mende Wano fana kuti warambe wa chita wala nevana muna raunda zawari Asa wasi kuzo inda kuzo mbo zepasa Kusikira tati nyai ya gaziri sikuwa Senzira ya kura kiza kunyunyuta ni kusafara Ne mabatiri wai tukwa chunu Kuta atisiku da kutu munyika Mwiti ya kumbu nyikizo wakana kubati kwa chibaro Ya tinga di state capture Ye parliament Capture Kana kubati kwa chibaro kwe dara re parliament Ne mapatu Atidi hizo oso Tuna tuzun zifambe pachena Saka ndo shoko na tuku pa Iro roto atiori tuwe itako wa tungamiri Ne nungamiri zose Ziripa sirose Muno mnye kana kutiru wa tungamiri kwenzi mboza kasi yana Uye tino tere wapanezo atine itatawa Nyaya mataura Yoku tinga itase kukadira Nyaya nyika Eh, nyika ndilo gara nishitawa ranjiti nyika ya kafana na ne zipi Ine mapo kwa maviri, mati maviri Kutodi zipi vari keno da mati maviri kuta abadani, awirirani Zino zipi ya Zimbabwe ya karusa Saka tuna kukaziri sa zipi Kuti zaka kosha zi nyika zisa nya zisira Kuneva noona wakune zimwe nyika Zunu zedi zifambe za kanaka Sakuwa haka nyika We are nation builders, we are peace builders We invest in peace We invest in building the nation We have no other country We have seen it in Somalia Tunozi wona kuzi mbozaka siyana siyana Kuna na Syria Kutu wanzi maputa nyika enyu Aiva kiki ne kukurumizi Saka isichedu kuwaka Uye kukurumiza kutiwaka Wangangati kupusa Asinozi ziwa kutu mkunyarara ikoko Tiliku zama kutide nyika edu Ya taza kuenda kumawere Na kutu kuzo zora nyika kumawere, ibasa rako ewe nene, ibasa redu, harina ine kutu izan PF, ITPC, ndie mwana wesuwe Zimbabwe. Aba teta paraza, no kupunza, upenye. Dozu, no pa muono edu, watu kutawa. I thank you. My sister. Thank you, Remo. When you say that you have to call member of parliament, and that you pretend to advocate the agenda to you as a sister, um, Advocating agenda yesterday is that he is leaving his final and cannot be contested. He further urged the triple C to approach court if ever they needed that to be. He's a lawyer. He knows that the parliament can actually, is not a court, but can review. The speaker can review his position, especially if there is a juicing of evidence that he has acted on a false and fraudulent document. This person is fraudulent. So therefore, the speaker has been given the correct information. If he's doubting who Triple C is, we are here. We are ready to give more evidence to say this is Triple C. There is no Triple C outside this body, on earth or in heaven. Heaven has given us as the body on earth to preside over the issues of the Triple C. So the MPs you have seen are a product of the careful deployment by this body. So yes, uh, that's not necessarily correct. The speaker can correct this position. Of course, if he wants to take us to court, we have to make a consideration on the basis of the facts that are at play. But we will, re we will make sure that we pursue every avenue to make sure that justice is done. We have no problems with people differing with us politically, but don't impose leadership on the triple C. Don't force us to say so and so is your leader. So and so. They tried it with the MDC. We will not allow it with the triple C. Thank you, Ruim.
my brother. Okay, uh, thank you, President. Thank you, Melody. There are allegations uh, that some of the people involved in the current reforms are senior members of the PCC. Uh, have you investigated this and is there any action being taken? And secondly, are we going, are we likely going to see you withdraw in case you do not make it in court in terms of your uh, application against this I said if there's no justice on our MPs, we have disengaged. But withdrawal is also on the cards. And even plunging the country into a deeper crisis, because we already have a constitutional crisis, but there's going to be a worse one if there is no justice on the issues that are at play. We can't allow the same tactic and the same trick to be used twice. We are the triple C, and that will not change. Doesn't matter what ZANU-PF would want to do or all the shenanigans, the fuzz mechanisms, the plots and everything. The plots that are going to be put in place will not work against us. But Mlondolos, you say they are senior members. I've said this time and time again. This movement has no hierarchy of senior or junior. This movement was only commenced on the 24th of January. 24 January, I announced to the world that we are commencing the Triple C as a tabula rasa movement, starting on a clean slate. We are where we are now. One year down the line, we've managed to have 104 MPs. We've managed to field a presidential candidate who beats the incumbent. We've managed to have 33 out of 34 mayors across the whole country. And in a flawed election, in a proper election, we have two-thirds in parliament. We have the majority over 70% in terms of the vote. So we are not ashamed of the kind of work we have done, but we don't have the so-called senior members. In fact, there are other people who have ceased being active in the C on account of not discharging tasks and roles. It's not a position-based membership. It's tasks and roles. And do you also exist in our membership registers? When you cease to also act in a manner where you execute your task, you also cease being a member. It's in our constitution. So some of the people you think are senior, they may be senior in age, but certainly not senior in the triple C. <laughs> yes, Yvonne? Uh, thank you. I think I'm about to run out. Maybe I'll come to Leo. Yes. You know, I know most of you because, you know, I was spokesperson for a long time. So I know most of you, and uh, uh, I know some, some champions may actually be surprised how I know these uh, names. Uh, thank you. My question is, you've spoken of going back to Sadat. How much confidence does the CCP have in the ability of Sadat and other regional bodies to intervene in the crisis of Zimbabwe? Well, uh, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. SADAC has done it in the past. They have been an adjudicator. They have assisted us as a people to find each other, the GPA. And we are simply saying, SADAC, because you observed the election, we are not telling you something new. You also observed the election you saw, and your report, your observer mission report, indicates that there were problems, fundamental problems. And because of that, they help us to find each other. So that we resolve the issues. It doesn't kill to dialogue. In any event in parliament, it's already a dialogue. In the local authorities, it's already a dialogue. I'm sure here in Narada we have two members or one from ZANU PF in the local authorities. There's already a dialogue. And we have never abused them because they are minorities. We realize that we are a government, but we also have opposition. ZANU is the opposition in Narada, even in a flawed election. Perhaps they will improve their fortunes if it is a credible election. So even in our caretaker authority, at local authority, they're in opposition. But there has to be dialogue. So dialogue is the natural disposition of human existence. You can't be human and no dialogue. Even birds, animals can dialogue and must dialogue. So we must dialogue to find our common answers. This fight, you know, uh, back and forth doesn't help. Look at the past five years. They gave money to MDCT. A lot of the money was spent on private issues and personal issues. No investment to the country. But we must, the, the political party's finance was actually abused. Because it must go to a party that has been allocated the responsibility by the people of Zimbabwe. In this case, it is the triple C. 
any attempt to do all these funny things, because I was told that the ZANU-PF was saying will not give money to triple C. It's not ZANU-PF that gives money. It is the citizens themselves who have already given money to the triple C. It is the taxpayers who have already given money in a flawed election. And that money is supposed to play a particular role. So any deviation from that is a violation of the Constitution of Zimbabwe and cannot be accepted or entertained. Leo, Nicolis, and lastly, my brother. Thank you, Leo from Well, they can't. We are the government in the local authorities. We call the shots there. Unfortunately, they can't resort to commissions because at law, they can't do commissions anymore. They can't also call for a by-election because there's no by-election. There's no vacancy. And even if you try to create a false vacancy using bogus people, you have triggered a constitutional crisis with a political route to pursue. We will not allow people who are not elected by the people to abuse people. In any event, why do you want to trigger a by-election where there's no legitimate basis for that by-election? It's a cost to the taxpayer. It's a cost to the country. Why don't you divert and allocate those resources to hospitals, to ambulances, to our civil servants, to our soldiers, eh? to our police? They need to be supported. We have money. If we have money to do those things, unnecessary and useless wrong political decisions must not be allowed to prejudice the taxpayer. Thank you very much, uh, President Joseph. A quick one. Do you have a time frame for this uh, disengagement? Indeed, we have said 14 days to have this issue resolved. Beyond the 14 days, it's now the political option, and we must be able to then deal with the issues. Don't, don't, don't worry about time. I hear people saying, no, we had an election in the 23rd of August. This is too late. People are forgetting. No, 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 no. You don't know I've been across the whole country. People are charged. The mood is electric across the whole country. People are raring to go. In fact, we're actually saying hold back. We must be able to find each other. And because they trust us, we are using that goodwill to explore the window of opportunity to dialogue and find each other. Doesn't mean that we are imbeciles. Peace is normally the weapon of the straw, whereas violence is the default setting and the DNA of the week. Thank you, colleagues. Last, my brother. Yeah, you must be talked about uh, the issue of uh, dialogue. But on the recent one that uh, President Zanupi has put this in, this was on Trump, I said that if uh, you want dialogue with the President of Amazon, you have to join Poland. So I agree to join Poland. Well, look, is Poland still there? <laughs> We, we, we are not in the business of joining ghosts. We are not in the business of going onto platforms that are not credible platforms. Pollard was there for the past five years. Can you show me one result other than making sure that the political leaders uh, are given accommodation in hotels and are given vehicles? No, we're not interested in that. We are not the pioneer caller. We are not motivated by trinkets and trappings of power. And I've listened to people in Zanupi saying, no, we withdraw uh, benefits for the MPs. Our MPs are not there for the benefits. <laughs> they are there to serve and not to be served. They are not there as an employment. They are there as a deployment. And they are not motivated by the missionary zeal. They are moved by the missionary zeal to serve the people of Zimbabwe and to cause transformation in communities. And to bring change. We are not joking. And we want those things to be resolved. So yes, uh, anybody can say whatever they want. Those are their views. That's why we are 15 million people. <laughs> but why, why would we join? I've already told you that Pollard is not a platform where we would engage. We will engage with ZANU-PF, but at a credible, in a credible environment, at a credible uh, level will not be part of Poland. We've said that before. 
doesn't matter if they want, they can go and uh, uh, pull out with the, the whoever. But resolving the issues of the country is about resolving the fundamental questions. You know, we are ready to go out of the country, talk to, because we, our voice can be heard and is heard. We are ready to say, help us to help ourselves on the following issues because we found each other on the critical national questions. But we can't have a country where one person behaves like a, bu a bull in a china shop. You just do as you wish. You are a gangster. All of us are just the dwarfs. No, 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 no. This country belongs to all of us. We don't have a bigger brother or a junior brother. We are brothers, equal brothers, equal sisters. And as a people, we need to be together. And that's why we are here to say less dialogue because we believe we must give dialogue a chance. God bless Zimbabwe. God bless you. Thank you very much, fellow colleagues.